Jimmy and D has them. Yeah. Yeah, news are came, interested. News broke Friday, right? Came out on Friday. We didn't get a chance to talk about it, but there were reports. We could take the, the uh, VO poll, Steve. They're looking at purchasing a minority stake in the Bucks, worth up to 25% of the franchise. There's no timeline for a sale. One of the Bucks minority owners who owns 25% is looking to unload that. And the Haslam Sports Group, I guess you would call it, yeah. is looking to expand outside of Ohio. So if the Haslams do pursue an NBA team to add to their portfolio, is that a good thing, a bad thing, or have absolutely no impact on the Browns? Well, the fact that they want to do it tells me it's just the wrong move. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll start with that. Yeah, just I, mean, I, with I, I think in the end, it's, I didn't, at first I didn't realize it was a, just a minority stake. So a minority stake, you're not really doing much day in, day out. No, you, so you, I think it's a non-factor. At first, I thought they were buying the, te- the main team. Right. And I was like, at first, my first reaction was like, well, that's not good. But then a, fr- then a friend, somebody on Twitter said, well, Bull, that could be good because then they'll pay less attention to the Browns, stay out of the way. Well, that was and my was thinking. Like, yeah. My thinking was, any diversion that we can get is good is good yes. because they would spend less time and energy screwing up the Browns. Yes, but there he is I, just out of the toilet. Then, then there's another piece of me that really <laughs> bothers me. It really bothers me. There's something about why. it. I don't know what well, it is. I'll t- yeah, yeah. Let me help. Yeah, because I felt the same way when they bought the crew. Yeah. Bro, we want to be an only child. We need every focus that you have on winning a championship with this team. And what it scares the hell out of me because he wants to be a winner. He wants to stand on the podium like Hunt Jr., Clark Hunt, and he wants to hold that trophy. And I think he's come to the realization, I'm never going to get my hands on the Lamar Hunt trophy. Yeah, so maybe I'll get this. Maybe I can win one with the Columbus crew. By the way, i got to jump in because uh, – Talk about Lamar Hunt Jr. out kicking his coverage. I mean, how absurd is that? Yeah, right. No kidding. My God, you think she really loves him, Gene? You think she, she loves, loves him? that money? Yeah, I'm sure she yeah, really loves. Of course, loves she him. does. Please, she don't love him. For now, <laughs> what do you mean? Talk about I mean, his wife looks like a supermodel. It's 20, 30 years younger I, than l- him. Listen, I, I, every billionaire has a supermodel, and even if their wife wasn't a supermodel before. They are, they, utilize, one. they are utilizing the technology the NFL is not. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that's a good line. They they duck here. Oh, my God. Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? I mean, it's it's interesting that he would want to diversify. You know, the, I don't uh, know. The, diversification is not a problem, right? You're, my owner stake in an in a NBA cl- club is not. I mean, it's just a silent move. Really. How about you it? take some of that money and the, the, the problem? The problem is this. Is it a prelude to him? thinking that he can buy his way into the bucks. You see what I'm saying? As right. the majority as owner. As the majority owner. I would right. imagine that most minority owners are doing it for one reason. That one. Mm-hmm. So he position because the bucks have been a team that have sold themselves many a time. Yeah. You know, from Herb Cole to, and doing your thing. Here's the deal, right? So he's positioned himself here. There's got to be a green arrow next to the bucks, though, just yeah. in terms of a team that could win a championship. Mm-hmm. You would want to be involved in that some way, shape or form. By the way, when I ripped Jimmy Haslam uh, in terms of buying, some a couple of people were like, "Well, he's better than the learners. He's better than the learners." Okay. And I'm like, "Is yeah. he?" Well, I don't know that he is. Their winning percentage is like minuscule better, like almost exactly. The 0 the same. 16 and 1 and 15 happened on Jimmy. That was watch. Jimmy. So no, by that, if measure, you look at just, it was Al was the dad and then Randy, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you look at just when Randy became the CEO, technically they have a better winning percentage under Randy. If you put the learners together, it's slightly below Jimmy. Well, what would tip my scales there is the 0 and 16 and 1 and 15. Yeah, Their yeah, bottom yeah. was worse. Right. Because, I mean, remember, we were irate when the Browns were only winning three, four, five games. Right. Mm-hmm. Then we had a 0 and 16 and 1 and 15 back to back. Right. Mm-hmm. And the learners were almost were, 0 and 16 t- twice in a row. Plus, the learners had the disadvantage of being an expansion team. We were always going to suck at the beginning. Yeah. He, he did one thing, though. I'll give him credit for it. Jimmy? Yeah. I mean, he 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 hasn't. G been, is a low-key Jimmy defender. Hey, low-key. You're, hey. you're a gentleman's punch, punch Jimmy defender. Hey, I, <laughs> so, so, so what, what do you say about Jimmy? Jim, at least Good. Jimmy will go out and make a move. Right, Al Learner and Randy Learner, they was over watching soccer teams with bums on the sideline. Boy Scouts of America. We had Jason Trusnick running around here playing. <laughs> but he, here's what I'd say, G, is like, okay, I'll give you that. But, like, it's the same thing when it came to 
I hate to bring Baker into it, but I will. It was mm-hmm. like, well, Baker won a playoff game. He's better than all these other. Yeah, well, when everybody else is a zero and you're a two, and Baker's <laughs> better than two, but whatever. Yeah. Then everything looks better. Yeah. You know, so maybe the learners were a zero and Jimmy's a one. You know, I mean, I'll, he still sucks. Here, here. Would, would you, would, is there any owner in football that you wouldn't rather have owned the Browns except for maybe Daniel Snyder? Ooh. I used to it's think damn what about shot the dude, what about the, what about the dude down in Miami? After he I didn't, the, uh, the Miami dude. I didn't like. I didn't like the. Uh, well, I don't like the Texans people. What about Miami? Uh, I don't really. I didn't really care for the, the the owners of the Carolina Panthers. The Raiders are broke. The, I wouldn't. Don't really care. But for like all Miami. these franchises have more success. The, the, the coach, the Miami. dude in Miami. I don't. I don't want to play for them. Steve they, Ross. Yeah. yeah. I mean. But here's what I. Here's what the, we're in the lower tier. For the sure. original point is. Uh, Jay said something at the beginning of the year, and he's and I was like, man, I don't know if I believe that. But now I, I didn't came around. He started talking about Deshaun Watson, and he started saying that if it don't work, you know what I'm saying, it's on him. And at one point in time, I didn't I didn't really believe it like that. Mm-hmm. But now I wholeheartedly believe it because if you counting on other people at the top, you know where you can make a difference, right in the center. See, you can be inept all you want. Guess what? I call the plays inaudibles. You can be inept all you want. You, I don't like that player. I want this player. You can be inept all you want. You tell them we ain't drafting this guy, and I don't like this coordinator, and we're going to run these I, plays, and then you can go out and execute. Deshaun Watson can make the difference that the coach, the general manager, and everybody well, can. But you hitching your wagon on somebody it that better work. What, I, what I like to see is Jimmy come out and say, we're going to win 10 games. And if we don't win 10 games, there's a problem here. It sets the standard for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's somebody true. set, the, culture, sta- that's somebody set the standard here. This is the standard here. So you know if you come up short, don't even be looking around. Yeah. You know what's coming your way. Or, yeah. or Deshaun Watson could tell people he come out with our first press conferences. No. This is a playoff but, team. But, this is how we going to move. But yeah. G, but G. But they tried that last year. We're the best defense but G, in the NFL. If the ownership sets it from the top, Right, that yeah. come downhill. Everybody yeah. gets that message. It, you're right. If Jimmy came to the podium, and I, I, it's always hard to put a number of wins because you could have injuries and everything else. But I would love to see Jimmy say what you just said. This is a playoff team, and I expect this team to make the playoffs. And if and we don't, if I'm going to fire everybody. I'm going to make bad hirings like I've done. For if 10 we years. don't, <laughs> Jer- we're not going to continue going at the same point to now, the same. Now that was going to have a success, but Jerry Jones does it all the time. Like, yeah, but not, it hasn't worked. But it had worked, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Jerry somebody, sucks somebody, too. Has, somebody has to say what the standard is. Yeah. Right? Right. What are we shooting to? What because, are we shooting yeah. for? For a long time, we've always, always said, even when you ask media people, the first thing they say is changing the culture and sustain, sustain, sustain success mm-hmm. and turning the corner and flipping. It sounds like one of the old NFL uh, you know, films where you, you look at the 2022 20, Browns and they're like, a team look, 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 look. And you're right. like, what does that really Vin, mean? Look, yeah, they won look, four look. games. Vince Lombardi <laughs> is making hey, the turn. I'm going to ask the three of you guys as friends and coworkers to hold me to a standard, right, okay? Right. If at any point next August you hear me get excited, okay. you hear me say, this team can do this, Yep. I want you to just politely take the water bottle that you're drinking <laughs> from it up. and throw it right at my face right, right, as hard as you can. Like, what are you talking about? Don't. Let me drink the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. Man, I, I told myself the same thing. You know, and I'm, I'm holding you accountable. And I'm the Duke of New Jerk. I, had, I didn't you, have a title like the, I got you're now. The Duke of the Kool-Aid. And package. I had the Kool-Aid. I remember when, when and we, I had the six before and Watson Kool-Aid. came back, my man sat here and said, six and all. <laughs> six, six and all Kool-Aid. To me, there's three things <laughs> that concern <laughs> me. Three things that make somebody oh. a bad owner. What's and that? Jimmy has all three. Oh, that? That? One, <laughs> meddling. He does it. Yeah, um, as bad as almost any owner in, in in sports. Two controversy off the field. The Browns have had, including on him personally, the Browns have had a ton of it. We lead the league in during drama. his time. Three lack of success on the field. They've had almost none. So he's all three of those. He's the triple threat poles. for a bad. Like how owner. many other owners have those three things? Not many. Yeah. Daniel yeah. Snyder does. Hey, well, here's I, here. I will say this though. That's yeah. a great comparison. I, I, I will say this though. We ain't made enough money. We, like, when you, I feel like once you make over a certain amount of money, meddling happens. <laughs> <laughs> if it, I'm meddling in my daughter's life. You ain't marrying him. Yeah, you but gee, yeah, right, there's right, a right, level. Right. 
G, but there's obviously when you're a billionaire, you own the team, you're right. going to have some degree of involvement. Right. But most of the owners don't meddle like Jimmy meddles. What do you consider uh, meddling? Like uh, major meddling? Because uh, some people say, no. what, what has Jimmy Drafting meddling? Johnny Manziel here, because a homeless here, guy told here. you to. That, okay. That's right. meddling. No, let, let some, me, some meddle, but you, you don't hear about it, right? There's a difference. Jimmy, right. Jimmy want to be front and center. Like, I'm in the mix yeah, yeah. here. You ain't in the mix. Let me Just let me like let me give you a story that I know for a fact. <laughs> like the right. I'm not gonna. I don't know. I don't think I've ever told the story on the air. Right. But I know somebody. <laughs> I know somebody who worked for the Browns. Not in a football position. Okay. I want to be careful what I say because th- this person told me this in anonymity, and I don't want to give it away. But somebody that worked for the Browns in important position, but had nothing to do with making football decisions. It was kind of different stuff. Okay. All right. And this Mm. guy used to meet with Jimmy once a week. And Jimmy would say, tell me the truth, blah, 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 blah. And the guy never told Jimmy the truth because he was afraid that Jimmy would fire him. He can't handle the truth. All right? (laughs) So for weeks and weeks, he gave Jimmy little bits but didn't tell him the real truth. That's a bad sign. And then finally, (laughs) finally, there was one time he said, okay, listen, I really believe you're holding back on me. I promise you none of this will come back. I really need to know, do you think I'm doing this and this right in this avenue? My guy was finally convinced to be honest with Jimmy. Cost him his job. And he lost his job. That's a, that's yeah. a, see, that's the problem. And by the way, you, every other high-level employee in the building yeah. knows that story. Right. That's right. You, every one of them. You have to have people that will, certain people that will hold you to the truth standard. Here's the deal. And you have to be man enough or woman enough to stand there and accept it and be like, they come, to, they come at you from a clean space. This is what we see. That's right. right. And you have to process that. Now, if you sitting there looking for people just to give you the answer that you want to hear, you on a doom ship from the beginning. Yeah, That's one it. of the, the, the analogies that was, this was the way it was told to me, and I, I'll never forget it because I have later come to look at it and see that's exactly what's happened. A league, a league reporter who knows all the intimate workings of most of the teams, but particularly the Browns very well, told me when, in telling me that Jimmy was never going to be successful and giving me all the reasons why, one of the stories he told me was the biggest problem with the Browns and Jimmy is that he runs this team like it's the Survivor television show. Oh, right. He has pitted yeah, right. one high-level employee against the other, and what he's done is created this almost open tug-of-war for power of the key to the castle. Like, Which is the opposite of what you want. <laughs> it's exactly right. The opposite... Yeah. So what this person said, who also is very intimate with a, a covering a, a franchise that has had long-term success, said the juxtaposition of the way it's going on here is that he's pitting people against one another mm. in this open air mm. idea of one of you is going to be my guy, the guy that's going to have my ear, mm. and I'm going to figure out who it is. Mm. And now you've got guys working in high level positions that are working against each other. They're pulling against the rope. Yeah. That it never worked. The, and then the other story it was so you've got the survivor going on here and at a few other organizations in which he detailed how they work. He said that's laugh that notion is laughable. You've got everybody pulling on one side of the rope knowing that there's 31 other teams that are already working against them. You don't want right. to create situations inside your building where you have this one working against this one working against this one trying to ultimately wear the crown of king. And we saw that play out after the firing of Hugh Jackson and ultimately both guys ended up being gone. Mm-hmm. But you had the defensive coordinator and the offensive coordinator basically picking over Hugh Jackson's carcass while he still had a heartbeat. Who is going to win control of the Browns? Right, right, right. Now both are gone. It's an unhealthy situation. Yeah. And you've got to get rid of that culture inside the and building. And maybe it's started to change because these, because Barry and Stefanski and Deep and Destin do seem to be able to work together. Well. But I don't know. But, or is it an idea like I told you every other employee in the Browns building heard that story and they said, well, I'm not going to fall for that trap. Yeah. Stefanski knows where the bodies are buried in Cleveland. He's talked. He knows. Yeah. So he's under the impression where maybe he goes home at night and spills to his wife. Oh my God, it's so dysfunctional. This is going on. But when he comes into work the next day, he's like, hey, 
Andrew Di Podesta, my boy. What's up, Chief? Hey. But behind the behind the scenes, there's only one way you relegate that. If you got a great quarterback and he better than everybody that's else, that's it. That's it. It, it don't matter. Only way you can overcome. It don't matter what the hell they up there it talking about. A lot of work. A fight. Fi fi you know, three years ago, I would have put Mike Brown in the bottom tier. Now he's maybe look, look. a notch above the bottom look, tier because right? you see, because he had the luck Perfect. of the draw of yes. being the worst team in the Perfect. league the year before. Per a got, trans Zach a, Taylor, a transcending quarterback. Zach comes Taylor out. was about to get fired. Now, now I look, think he's, do, he's now doing he's a pretty best. good job. Not the best, but he's doing a pretty good job. Uh, we kind of blew this lineup. It's Jesus. okay. No, we got the. I like this. We did a lot of good stuff, and we're gonna get to everything we wanted to because we're the best. Uh, we do have the results True. real quick from the bowl bet of the day. He took the Guardians to win the World Series at plus twenty seven hundred. Over three hundred <clears> people <throat> voted on this bowl. You're riding alone here, though. Only sixty two percent of the fans. Who? Would take that bet with those Wait, odds. Sixty-two percent of the fans who, who, who said, said no. They would not ride with. Oh, Bull. said 